I'm going to tell you the process that you can follow to obtain every promise that God has ever promised. Number one, faith believes. Okay? 2 Corinthians 4.13, we, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So now we know that faith believes, but we also know that faith speaks. So faith believes and then it speaks. This is the process. Number one, faith believes. How does faith believe? Well, faith, how does faith come? By hearing the word. So it has to believe the word. You have to find the word that meets your need. Then you choose to believe that word. Then you say that word. Why? Because now you're believing it and you're acting upon it. So faith speaks. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed. And therefore, because I believed, have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Next, faith acts. Now, faith acts. Get this. Faith acts. There is two parts of faith acts. One is obedience. The other is rest. There's a time to be obedient and there's a time to rest. Now, sometimes resting is obedience. Right? Now watch. For unto us, Hebrews 4.2, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So now notice there had to be an action, an obedience to the faith. Now, sometimes that obedience is doing nothing. In other words, you have believed, and there you stand. Sometimes when you act after you have believed, you are acting yourself out of faith. What does that mean? Let me tell you this way. Uh, You pray for somebody, and you don't see a change right away. And you don't like that. You want it to be instant. Everybody does. But let's say you pray and you don't see a change instantly. So then, you, then the enemy will hit you with the thought, well, you didn't do enough. No, no, see, now, right there, you have to decide, did I do what the word said? Yeah, then I've done enough. The enemy will try to tell you you didn't do enough. The minute you act on the thought that you did not do enough, you have just moved. See, the fact that you move and do something else proves you don't believe it's done. Do you get that? So once you hit that, you have to decide, okay, I did what I, I believe, I've said it. Now, is, is there an action I need to do? Okay, do I need to lay hands? Or what? Okay, maybe that's it. But if you have done what it said, you have to decide, now I enter that rest. And that rest is knowing this is done. And if you know it's done, then you won't bring it up again yes. other than thanking God for the fact that it's done. Yes. Amen? Amen? And listen, if you, people, I hear this all the time, and I, I, you know, this is one of the things I'd rather preach, um, you know, to a camera, you know, in a recording, not to people. Because many times when I'm preaching to people, they take it personally for themselves, and, I, you know, I don't like that part of this. But people will tell me, oh, yeah, I, I'm believing, and, uh, I, and, but I believe I'm healed. I'm by his stripes, I'm healed. I believe it, and I believe, and, and I've already believed that. And I've already had this person pray for me and that person pray for me and this other person. And, and, you know, and I believe, I believe, I believe I'm healed by his stripes. Okay. Then what are you doing in my healing line? If you believe it's done, you're not going to be in the healing line. Do you understand that? The fact that you're in the healing line, you're not believing it's done. You're believing it's about to be done. So, and if that's where you are, but that's the, see, that's the beauty of the healing lines that we do though. I don't, I'm not looking for your faith. So you can be in this line, has nothing to do with your faith. Why? Because I'm using my faith. And so I I understand I'm not trying to put anybody under condemnation or any of that kind of stuff, but we have to move. Well, let me put it this way. If we don't move into faith, the worst place to be is to think you're in faith when you're not. Because you know what that means? That means you're going to be without for a long time. Because you, you're thinking you're already believing and you're not. And you, when you move into believing, then you see the results. This is why we see some people sometimes go for years confessing, I believe I'm healed. I believe by stripes I'm healed. And yet still not healed. Why? Because they've never believed it yet. Why? Because they're in every healing line, every healing seminar, they're every, all, all the time. No, nope, there has to come a point where you go, you know what? It's done. And you settle it. 
you believe you have received. If you believe you have received, you're not waiting to receive. Amen? Well, I believe I'm healed and I'm just waiting for the manifestation. You just told me you don't believe you're healed. Let's just be honest. Listen, first we have to diagnose the problem. So I'm not putting anybody down. I'm just telling us we have to move from hope to faith. Okay? It's okay to be in hope as long as you move into faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Now, let's finish this up. Finally, faith rests. In Hebrews 3, 18, it says, And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. You hear that? If you believe not, you're not at rest. Faith, once it has believed and spoken and acted, it rests. It's not nervous. It's not wondering. It's it's rest. This is done. And everybody else around you will be nervous, and there will be, you know, twiddling their thumbs, and, well, what what is it? Oh, what what, what about this? What about that? And they'll be all in kind of confusion and all that kind of stuff going on in fear. And you're just going to be there going, no, this is done. Don't worry about it. It's handled. Well, well, what are you going to do about it? It's already done. See, they'll try to get you to engage, you know, especially if it's for you. Well, how, but how are you feeling? What has that got to do with anything? Right? It, it has nothing to do with it. Faith has no feeling. Amen? Amen. So, you, as a believer, you should never ask a person how they're feeling. Why? Because you are tempting them to disobey the word of God. Amen. You should ask them, well, how, how are you believing? That'd be better. And if they said, well, by, by the stripes I'm healed. Glory to God, I agree. Guess what? Now it's done. Why? Because if any two agree, it's touching anything. See, instead of, going, instead of trying to get them to deny what the word of God says, right? The word of God has nothing to do with feeling. You don't find feelings in the word of God. Do you get that? All right, so he says, uh, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed, we which have believed, Do enter into rest. Why? You believed, it's done. Time to rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. You hear that? Your healing was accomplished from the foundation of the world. And Jesus just came to enforce that. Yes. Right? And by his stripes, it was enforced. If they shall enter, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spoke in a certain place in the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Do you get that? We have to realize God rested. He said, it's like winding a clock. You know, back if you remember back when you had to wind a clock. But you wind a clock and then you just let it run. God ordained your healing from before the foundation of the world. Jesus paid for it at the whipping post. And now it's just running. The time is running and it's done. But God is not healing because it's accomplished. Do you understand that? So, and it was accomplished from the foundation of the world. Why? Because Jesus was slain from the foundation of the world. Now, he says... And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remains that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. In other words, the first covenant, the people on the first covenant didn't enter in. But we get to enter in. They And now they get to enter in because now we have entered in. But they didn't receive the promise. Again, he limits a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remains, therefore, a rest to the people of God. 
For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. You hear that? When you enter into rest, now you have ceased from your works and you are relying on the fact that God has already accomplished the work. So now it's not you doing stuff that make it come to pass. So you can't brag on your faith and on what you did. Why? Because God did it from the foundation of the world and you just got smart enough to believe him. Hallelujah. Amen. There we go. Now, he said in verse 11, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. You hear that? So our labor is to enter into rest. Why? Because that's the hardest part. The hardest part is considering it done and then not picking it up again. You got that wayward child that's not living right, and you have to end up turning that child over to God and then not picking it up again. You have to consider this done. What does that mean? Then you start talking to that child like they are right with God. You know, it's amazing. I can go to different places, different businesses where they know me, and they'll ask, ask me questions sometimes, or I'll just pull out my phone and show them a video of somebody getting healed, and I'll treat that person like they're saved, even though I know they're not. But I will talk to them like they're saved, and I'm more likely to get them saved by talking to them like they're saved then by saying, you see that right there? That'll never happen to you because you're a dirty, rotten sinner. <laughs> see, that ain't how you win them. It's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. Amen? But yet with your own loved ones, sometimes you talk to them better, worse than you would talk to a complete stranger. And you're, you're telling them, well, this is what you're doing wrong. That's what you're doing wrong. Yeah, well, they may be doing lots wrong. But you don't pick that back up. And go to God, oh, God, when is my kid going to get saved? No, you turn them over to him. And you say, you know what? You said me and my household, me and my children, and my children's children, and my grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, you said we shall be saved. I believe you. I don't believe their actions. I believe you. And then that looses the angels to get in front of their face constantly with the gospel. Right? But Now, listen, there's only room enough on your problem, whether your problem is a child, a sickness, uh, whatever it is, there is only enough room on that problem for one hand. You get to choose if that hand is yours or God's. If it's yours and you pick that thing up again, guess what? You're going to have that problem. But if you turn loose and let God put his hand on it, it'll come to pass. Amen? Amen? So, for the word of God... Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful. That word quick means alive. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen? Amen? Now... So what does faith do? Remember, you have the opportunity to choose faith. You can choose to believe. And when you choose to believe, you're going to believe, then you're going to speak, then you're going to act. And that act may be an action or it may just be saying, "Mm -mm, done, it's done, right? That process is the process of faith. Any person can do that. 